So this is a bio on my 1940 Chevrolet truck. This 1940 Chevrolet truck I purchased a little over 12 years ago for $500. Um, it had no motor, no trans, and it's kind of an interesting story. But uh, we've got to pull it inside and do some work on it today, so let's get that started. So something I've always run on this uh, old Chevy is white wall tires. I used to grind these and I made them wide whites. I was so cheap I wouldn't buy the wide whites, but I always wanted to powder coat these wheels. Didn't know what color I wanted them powder coated. I think I'm going to powder coat them silver and I want to change the tires. So what I'm going to go to, I just mounted this tire to try it. These are Hercules HP 4th thousands and uh, that's a 245 60 and I can run those on all four corners and make this thing actually handle a little better so I'm gonna switch that out get rid of the white whites or the white walls and go with a raised white letter <music> That's a little bit of a problem. See the uh, release bearing supports broke. Supposed to be a support right there. It's stuck in the uh, back of the clutch. And it's stuck. It's not coming out. Clutch is bad too, so I'm gonna tear that apart. Transmission's out, but uh, parts of it were left behind. This is the collar that the throw bearing rides on. Yeah, that's not supposed to be broken. It's the trans out of the truck, and it's it's broke off. Not good. So yeah, we're gonna pull the clutch apart see what's going on there obviously we have something that's not right well that escalated quickly we now have the oil pan off a couple of rod bearings and a main cap for the longest time this motors had a pretty good little uh, rattle at startup a few years back I over revved it gear jamming passing cars probably took it to 75 or 8,000 RPM somewhere in there so I figured I would check on the bearings while I was here because it's pretty easy to get the oil pan off with the trans out yeah it's in worse shape than I thought looks like the crank's gonna be okay but we're gonna be putting bearings in it and I think I'll modify this bearing when I put it back in so that I can get 360 degree oiling on my rods that way they oil better because they don't look like they're oiling very good. This engine's always had really good oil pressure. It runs 100 plus on the oil pressure, but it's just not getting in when it needs it. So yeah, we'll order some parts. The wheels are going off to powder coat. The clutch is trashed. You can see the hot spots. It's just garbage. Been doing a little more work on the 40 Chevy. Got the wheels on. Look at them, they look good. Powder coated, new tires. Flywheel surfaced and ready to go. Still waiting on bearings. I gotta put rod bearings in it, so it's kind of dark under here. Can't see anything. But this morning, I got up early, had some weather roll through. Uh, it cooled off. Nice morning to uh, rip the trans back out of this thing so that I can uh, figure out what I did wrong. So we're gonna get on that, pull the transmission out, and then uh, I'm gonna take the valve body to Phoenix. Uh, got a guy down there that has a dyno, 
a valve body dyno so we're going to dyno the valve body and see what's going on with it i'm i'm missing a channel somewhere in the valve body to allow governor pressure to force it into the next gear i know they mechanically shift with a with an open gate valve um, through their passages but if the governor pressure isn't reading correctly they they won't shift so the governor has to be bypassed internally and that's where I messed up I'm pretty sure so we'll get that out and I'll uh, keep you updated when we head to Phoenix back on the old 40 parts are showing up We've got the flight wheel ring gear on looks good Johnson speech this is a factory uh, original old school set of Michigan bearings for this 348 you just can't buy quality stuff like this anymore so we're gonna get them rod bearings put in and uh, put this thing back together well I didn't film a lot of it but I got the transmission back in as a trip over a chair there's the old W348 motor W motor, elephant motor, they call them a lot of different things. So, wheels are looking good. We're going to fire this thing up and run it through the gears here. See how this uh, new transmission behaves. And the oil pressure. gauge like it used to. first time I've really done anything to it since I built the truck it needed a lot of little things because I've neglected it but so if you've stayed with me through the whole video you're gonna get the cool story of the truck I had a customer and uh, he was from my diesel shop in the day and I treated him really good and he came to me and he saw this 348 engine on an engine stand in my shop and he actually asked me what I was going to do with it. And I said, I don't really have plans. I'll build a hot rod one day and install it. And he said, I have an old truck that I've had for about 45 years. And 
it, that motor would bolt right in it. It used to have a 409 in it. You should come by and take a look at it. So I kind of ignored the guy a little bit. He come by my shop one day and he says, you've got to come and see this truck. And he picked me up for lunch. We went right straight over to this rental property that he had. And when I saw the truck, I couldn't believe it. I was like, man, what a cool truck. At the time, I didn't have a lot of money. I told the guy, I said, hey, I don't, I, I don't have the money to buy this thing. Like, th this thing's worth way more money than I, I've got. And uh, he said, I haven't even given you a price. And I was like, you're right. You haven't given me a price. I says, I know what it's worth. What do you want for it? And he said, $500. And I, I was floored. I was like, he really wants me to have this truck. So I purchased it and uh, installed the motor and drove it around for a couple of years and then one day a guy actually basically cornered me at one of the drive up Wednesday nights here in Havasu and he started to tell me a story about this truck and it had quite a history uh, dating back almost 46 years in Havasu. The uh, original builder was a hot rod guy in California. He sold it to a guy here in Havasu. The guy here in Havasu had a brother that raced 409 engines, so he really liked the 409 engine that was in it. Two four barrels. He said, you gotta buy this thing. It's a really great truck for you. And uh, about a year later, after purchasing the truck, the younger brother got drafted to Vietnam. When he got his draft papers he basically handed the title to his older brother and he said I'm probably not coming home because that was kind of the consensus of the Vietnam War and he said do whatever you want with the truck so the older brother yarded the motor out of it sold it to the guy I got it from and it sat all of those years interesting story I get back from the oil field and I'm at a gas station putting fuel in the truck and there's an old guy and a young girl out there standing next to my truck. And I kind of looked at him funny and he didn't really acknowledge me and he was just staring at the truck. So I started putting fuel in and I said, can I help you? And he said, where did you buy this truck? And I said, I bought it from the, the scrap guy here in town, Havasu Iron. The guy's name's Todd that I got it from. And he said, this is my old truck. And I'm like, you're the younger brother that went to Vietnam and he said yes so interestingly enough he got to see his old truck he wasn't upset about it he says you know it had a lot more paint on it when I owned it but really cool story that this truck sat untouched in a yard I literally have the title the original Arizona title it was notarized before I was born in 1969 so the truck was sold in 1969 and never registered until i got the truck in 2010 so pretty cool truck it was kind of fun having y'all watch the uh the little redo okay so jimmy he, he he used to live here in phoenix i don't know worked for some electronics company whatever and uh he's brought me here to this hot dog place ted's hot dogs ted's hot dogs he says this is the only chain outside of new york only these, one. These uh, hot dogs. Hey, Jimmy, so it's lined up out the door now. Yeah. Uh, he says it'll be like that most of the day from lunchtime on. So let's see how this. We got onion rings. Whoa. Okay, so Matt's loading the thing up for another pull. Now he's put his magic fingers on it. Um, is it gonna work, Matt? We don't know until we know. That's the most useful information. That's that's why we have this big old machine here to uh, tell <laughs> us what we don't know. Instead of putting it in the boat and trying there. Yeah, it's it's kind of a pain in the butt to pull the trans in and out of the boat, to be honest with you, because you got to pull half the interior out. So one of the floorboards has to come up. It's kind of a nuisance. Now we 
a lot of gauge and more pressure some more leaks. Yeah, so was it before, before, before all we had was the uh, mm -hmm. pressure bypass. Yeah, now you've got enough to shift your shaft a little. That means oil's flowing. That's a good thing. Yep. <laughs> That's positive. In general. Now, looks like we are in reverse. So we've raised your line pressure up without totaling out your reverse pressure. Mark is gone. Mutual, so there should be no pressure, but you still have your converter and lube feeds. And converter and lube feeds don't look to be crazy excessive either. So now That's we're in uh, to, uh, first. So now we're in first gear. Yep, you're gonna have your reverse servo and your forward pressure, which gives you first. Your reverse servo is applied in lower verse. And then you have your converter feeds there. You have line at 205. Forward pressure there, no direct and release. No second gear pressure, no fourth clutch. You're good there, and our should be to the first. Now we have second gear servo. Forward gear, reverse servo gets off. Forward pressure is there, and then your second gear servo is active. Still stable there, still stable on your line pressure. Yep. EV's there. And then it'll probably go to third. So you get release and direct pressure, which gives you third gear. Still have no fourth gear, which is what we want. The reverse servo doesn't show any pressure. TV show, TV's gonna show basically line, because it's maxed out. Then you're gonna jump up to fourth gear. Oh, so we have fourth gear now. Fourth gear five, so. and your fourth gear is one or two PSI lower than your line, which is good. It shows that we don't really have much for cross leaks. You have direct, forward, release, front servo all engaged for all within a couple pounds of each other. That's good. And then you're going to go to back down to third. Make sure to downshift because these things will downshift. Yeah, sometimes the piston will hang up, but the pressure won't yep. go. So now you have it's downshifted. It's in second gear right now. You have your front servo, your fourth clutch is off, your reverse servo is still off as it should be, and then your direct and release are still off. Then you're going to switch up. We're going to drop back to first. It looks like your reverse servo engaged, your front servo came off, so now you're just strictly in first gear with forward and reverse servo. And you still have consistent release and apply pressures. And the reason you're releasing the flyer price so close is because of the hole drilled in the channel there that yeah, the book tells you to drill. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a little small one. Which is good, you want plenty right. of pressure there because that's all lube to the rest of the transmission. Right. And basically, about to press it 15 times. Because I built this out in several tests, you can see. Right. And we build this, these are all the lines that are involved just in building. You know, so you, you basically, because I have part deleted, you program yep. part out of it. So that this actuator doesn't try mm -hmm. to push it into part. It just Boy, it so right. We can see all the different lines just for a full manual valve body test, which really is a couple gears and that's it. When you get into the bigger ones like yeah, six feet or the Alice and stuff, you get into hundreds of lines. Oh boy. But we have all of that there for the valve body tester and it seems everything just good so now we got first lock. I don't have a plate in this, so it's not going to have first lock. Wait for it to get through the molar right here to stress pressure. There's no second gear plate, so you're not going to have second lock. And basically, in that gear as well, it's going to show zero on these two. And there's a little bit of pressure bleed on that circuit, but that's negligible. Not even to worry about. Right. And you're going to move it to third. Third gear kicks up. We're going to wait for that to get through. 
this is where you should have lockup. So you have third locked on this, so release goes away because you don't need converter feed, you just need apply pressure to go to the back side of the balance piston. Right. Now what happened is that pressure will go away and you'll be unlocked. Fourth gear is applied though with all the other gears. And then basically, oh, fourth gear is just a true overdrive gear. You can literally get rid of that overdrive housing off the back of the trans and run it as a 727 if you right. wanted to. And now it should go to fourth lock, which it does. So now you have fourth locked on it. Basically, it won't, we didn't do the modifications to do locked downshifts because you know I'm going to be running locked up anyways. So as you see here, fourth gear is still locked even though we're in third because of one of the modifications we do that locks fourth gear in. So it probably won't drop out until we switch to second or first. But you still have that there, but as you can see there's no lock up there. And even though it's in second gear, because the lock up is still engaged, it's gonna be stuck. So it drops out a third gear right there, so that's good. But you don't have lock up on it, and then it's just gonna drop back into first gear, which is where you'll have reverse servo and your forward pressure on the forward clutch. So you pretty much be good to run right there. Well, yeah. now as long as everything else I did, the transmission is right. Right? <laughs> now now it's on me. I'm just the right. body builder. If anything goes wrong, it's all on the trans guy. <laughs> that's, that's the blame around here. Well, Jimmy and I are back from our run to Phoenix. Got the transmission here. I air tested it. Never assume that it's good, but I air tested it and it's good. So I got the valve body that uh, tier one helped me out with. Hopefully it'll work as good on this transmission as it worked in that dyno machine because it looked good. Pressures were good. And uh, we're gonna get that installed, get that back in the boat and get it tested. Go for a boat rip. Thanks for watching.